Namaste and hello, this is your Sanskrit instructor welcoming you back into video number 174, assignment number 51. Please send this assignment to mdg.sanskrit at gmail.com for credit towards the online course and for feedback. All submissions must be legibly handwritten and scanned as a PDF or sent as a picture. Your task is to translate the following English sentences into Sanskrit using the table format. As usual, we will go over what sentences you need to translate and then we will do number one together so that you may know the expectations for this assignment. Let us get started. Number one, in autumn, the fruits fall from the trees. The table's already set up for that one. Number two, around the fire, the priests were standing and singing hymns. Number three, May your head be adorned with flowers, your arm with a bow, your mind with compassion, and your life with happiness. In the assembly, number four, the poets proclaimed the fame of the emperor. Number five, upon her breast, the blood of the child killed by the enemy was seen. Number six, O oh worthless servant, you have forgotten your master. Number seven, May I stand by you, O oh mother, in the danger and adversity. Number eight, due to anger, the light shone in his eyes, his bow fell from his hands, and his mouth quivered. Number nine, the sage should practice penance. Kri would, um, would be practice to do. The sage should practice penance for a long time, restrain his speech, and guard his mind from sin. Number 10, pigeons fly in the direction of the wind. And number 11, the learned man standing at the door was attracted by the voices of the children. Now let us get to our example sentence. In autumn, the fruits fall from the trees. The word for autumn is shared. This is feminine. We want it to be locative, singular. So since this is sharad, we want it to become sharat because We want it to become sharat because in Sanskrit, it's not allowed for, for, for this to end, for a word to end in da, so it gets hardened to the ta. Well, it doesn't get hardened, the first member. I mean, it is hardened, but the first member is usually taken. And then for locative singular, for locative, you're adding an E at the end. So then you're going to end up with shadati. So shadat plus E is going to give me sharati. Fruits, so in autumn, the fruits fall from the trees. So fruit should be nominative singular. Fruits is um, neuter, the word for The word for fruits is pal, palam. And then fruits, not nominative singular. This is an S. This should be nominative plural. 
So this becomes Palampale Palani. Palani. Then you have fall. To fall is but. This is first conjugation. This is active voice parasmaipadi. Since the fruits are falling, the fruits are in the nominative case, and then that means this has to be in third person plural. So then you end up with patanti. And then from the trees. That means we're dealing with ablative plural. Then um, trees is vrikshaha, vrikshaha, vriksha. This is a masculine noun that ends in a. Um, so vriksha, ablative plural, becomes vrikshebhyaha. I could have also used toruhu, masculine noun that ends in u, but the first one that came to mind to mind was um. Now that all of the sentences are here together, we are going to put them in the order that I desire. And I like the way how it is. So my version is going to be, my order is going to be Shariti. That's not Sharati, Sharati. Still making the same mistake. Sharati, Palani, Patanti. And then finally, Vrikshe Bhyaha. Bharati Palani Patanti Vrikshe Bhyaha. No consonant sandhi rules applies to the final hard consonant of a verbal base or nominal stem followed by a termination or a case ending beginning with a vowel or a semi-vowel. So I don't see any sandhis that needs to be applied here. So it should be left as is. And with that, this is your Sanskrit instructor signing off with a namaste since this is our final answer. Again, this is your Sanskrit instructor signing off with a namaste.